Hello and welcome to another exclusive review with me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz, where last year we had over 12 million minutes viewed on YouTube. We're now the number one reviewer of theatre in the West End and Las Vegas, and this week we've made it to Broadway to see the most talked about show of the season, Moulin Rouge, and we wanted to love it. Unfortunately, though, I did not. I found it excruciating in places, I found it unedifying in others, I found it overwhelmingly dripping with spectacular decadence, a couple of standout performances, but mostly an annoying mess. Basically, this show is all tits and teeth, and without this huge, magnificent, glorious, shiny and sparkly set, it would be all fur coat and no knickers. There would be little or nothing left by Broadway or even West End standards. All right, let's start at the beginning. If you're looking for a night out where you just have to sit there gormously looking at a stage that is dripping in glamour, showbiz, camp and opulence, Moulin Rouge is definitely for you. If you're looking for a beautiful story with great music and fabulous, consistent performances, this is not the show for you. And I think that's my problem. They brag that this musical has over 70 songs in it. But the problem with that is in most three minute segments, you get three or four songs, meaning everything is just chopped to bits. Just as you're getting into it, they move on to the next. It's almost as if this show has been designed for ADHD millennial narcissists who can't bear more than 25 seconds of it not being about them so they have to keep distracting with the next and the next and the next musically it's a mess based on the songs of everything from elton john to lady gaga and madonna you'll get everything in this show there's CeeLo green sia and everybody else basically from katy perry to 80s classics they just ram cram and stuff as many songs in as they possibly can the problem with that of course is that some are hits and some are misses i have also never been in a show in my life where the audience laugh as lead characters start singing often quite serious songs because it's not taken seriously as a piece it's a mockery. Let's talk about the story itself. It's about a woman who's trying to save the Moulin Rouge and in doing so offers herself as the prize. It's a horrible story that leaves me cold and uncomfortable in 2019 that I'm seeing a man with tons of money buying a woman who is willing to sell her soul, her life and her body simply to save her job and the jobs of those around her. This sits uncomfortably with me, and I think in London, some critics will have a problem with this. On Broadway, anything goes. That may not be the case in 2021 when it comes to the West End. In terms of the set, well, it is one of the biggest I've ever seen. The set starts as you walk in in the auditorium. It's just beautiful. My God, the money they have spent on this sexy production is ludicrous. And by the way, it is a sexy production. You've got hot people from the beginning to the end. They are delicious. There are all types there from straight to gay and everything in between. This is a millennial tale of all sizes, all shapes, all colours, all creeds. There's something for everyone. It's got a touch of the zoomanity about it from Cirque du Soleil in Las Vegas, if you've ever seen that. If not, just think Greatest Showman. Obviously, it's been massively influenced by that show. There are many nods to it throughout where you go. Ah, that lighting's familiar. Ah, that set piece is familiar. The cast themselves are phenomenal. They've got great timing. They've got great energy. And of course, the choreography is sensational in places. In other places, actually, it's quite lacklustre. There's quite a lot of track in this show as well, which bothers me. The sound isn't perfect. It's only perfect when it's pre-recorded. And I notice a couple of the tracks are not live, or at least they weren't tonight. There's an endless amount of track, though, in a lot of the pop numbers where the sound is better when they use the live band i found the sound to be thin and not necessarily celebrating the voices of those on stage for me this show has been overhyped in fact it can't live up to the hype everybody's gagging to get a ticket to moulin rouge and i can understand why sadly though it doesn't compete or compare with the polish of so many legendary broadway and west end shows Honestly, at times, it felt to me like a UK touring production that had had a shitload of money thrown all over it. I mean, the costumes are sensational, but somehow I just didn't care. The whole thing is thrown away and parodied. It is a parody musical in essence. It is not to be taken seriously. So in summary, for me, it didn't quite work. Let's talk about the talent, though, within the show. And there is a lot of talent. 
The ensemble, of course, are delicious and work their asses off throughout. This is not an easy show. It is ram-packed with one bit after the next, as I say, aiming at millennials who can't focus for more than 20 seconds. It moves at lightning speed. The star of the show for me is Karen Olivio, who is just fabulous. She's gorgeous. She puts as much heart into this as she possibly can, although I have to say I often feel it was wasted, but she certainly gives the 11 o'clock numbers, which is probably firework by Katy Perry. It's incredibly loud, this musical, and no song is louder than that. Aaron Tavet is dashingly handsome and has the voice of an angel. He's truly gifted, and it's a pleasure to hear him sing live. He's so talented. He's so gifted vocally. But there's not a lot of heart to this piece. It's hard to get into it when people laugh when you start singing. I mean, he gets to do everything from Roxanne, which was his biggest number. I'm not sure how much of that was live, but that's another story. To Crazy by CeeLo Green. The biggest number, of course, in the show for the pair of them, Karen and Aaron, is Come What May. I found it painful, actually, in the beginning. The first time around, just too loud, and it sort of lost control and came off the rails for me. But the second time he sang it solo, it was really beautiful. Karen's got it all. She's a leading lady and she plays the circus parts magnificently where she comes from the rafters as if she hasn't got enough to do on stage but worrying about the fact she might break her neck falling off this swing. Just beautifully done. Also kudos to Sam Matu who is the Duke of Monroth. Completely unlikable. An okay voice although he doesn't really get an opportunity to shine but certainly has the coldness to bring home the appalling context of this story. Nods to Brit Ricky Rojas as well, who did a great job playing the sort of parody Spaniard, the Argentinian for laughs. I guess the standout performance is from Danny Bernstein, who hosts the show. I guess he is the greatest showman in the piece. He's certainly the one with the only and biggest personality who drives the story. Special nods to Saar Naguja, who is just brilliant as Toulouse-Lautrec. He's probably got the biggest heart and soul in the piece. Collectively, they do the best they can to keep this story moving. Frankly, it's just a jukebox that probably would work just as well if it went from set piece to set piece. The story's almost superfluous, akin to We Will Rock You Once Again. So the reason I can't champion this musical is it's not credible as a piece. I've not seen worse writing than opening night of We Will Rock You. There's some utterly cringeworthy moments within it, presumably deliberate. But for me, the set and the talent is better than the show itself. I'd cut half the music and put better music in and make the music that's left twice as long. There's just too much. Also, one of the other problems of this show, it's obviously been influenced by the sort of Cirque theory of distraction. The problem with that is it becomes dizzying. And by the end of it, I needed a full body massage because of my neck problems, turning my head 750 times during the show. I guess they call this multi-sensory. Listen, if you're a young person who likes a lot of music, and just wants to sit and gormlessly stare at a stage you'll love Moulin Rouge the musical if you're looking for credible theatre this is not the piece for you you've been listening to another review by me Alex Belfield here at celebrityradio.biz well last year we had over 12.5 million minutes viewed on YouTube you can check out all of our hundreds of interviews and reviews at www.celebrityradio.biz 